hear the word of the Lord as, as it is found in the book of Acts, chapter 4, 32 through chapter 5, verse 11. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands and houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. There was a Levite, a native of Cyprus, Joseph, to whom the apostles gave the name Barnabas, which means son of encouragement. He sold a field that belonged to him, then brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. But a man named Ananias, with the consent of his wife Sapphira, sold a piece of property. With his wife's knowledge, he kept back some of the proceeds and brought only a part and laid it at the apostles' feet. Ananias, Peter asked, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and to keep back part of the proceeds of the land? While it remained unsold, did it not remain your own? And after it was sold, were not the proceeds at your disposal? How is it that you have contrived this deed in your heart? You did not lie to us, but to God. Now when Ananias heard these words, he fell down and died. And great fear seized all who heard it. The young, man, the young men came and wrapped up his body, then carried him out and buried him. And after an interval of about three hours, his wife came in, not knowing what had happened. Peter said to her, tell me whether you and your husband sold the land for such and such a price. And she said, yes, that was the price. Mm -hmm. Then Peter said to her, how is it that you have agreed together to put the spirit of the Lord to the test? Look, the feet of those who have buried your husband are at the door and they will carry you out. Immediately, she fell down at his feet and died. When the young men came in, they found her dead, so they carried her out and buried her beside her husband. And great fear seized the whole church and all who heard of these things. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We are continuing on in our sermon series on the book of Acts. The book of Acts is a witness to the work of the Holy Spirit and the spread of the gospel. God is doing a new thing. The church is forming and growing. The work of the Holy Spirit abounds. There is healing in Jesus' name. When the disciples are told to be silent by the council and elders of Jerusalem, they instead prayed for boldness to proclaim God's word. There was no keeping quiet about the good news of Jesus Christ. The church was like a newborn babe, strong and dedicated to growing, yet even that church needed protection from within. The church in our reading this morning is a picture of unity. It is an answer to the prayer Jesus prayed that they may all be one so that the world may know that God had sent him. 
They were not united for unity's sake. They were united as a community to share the good news of the gospel. They were united in purpose. And when the apostles spoke, it was more than a pep rally where everyone shouts and gets all excited and then goes home to grumble about whatever is going on. The apostles were teaching the meaning of a faith community based on the knowledge of the life-giving resurrection of Jesus Christ. Life was not divided to living one way at church and another way at home. The group that met had a oneness of heart and soul. Now, if you've ever played piano or, or learned how to play, at one point you probably heard or played heart and soul. Or maybe you heard it when your friends were learning how to play it, or maybe you joined in. Two people play the piano with their own parts to play, but they are, forgive the pun, in concert with one another. The music can start off with one player, then the next, and then the two play together. It's beautiful, the working together of two individuals. And it would be silly for one player to say, you know, this is my piano, and I am going to play what I want. And for the other to say, oh, no, 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 this is my piano, and I am going to play what I want. You can just see the elbows flying and everybody just pushing each other off the center of the piano bench. Wait a minute, wait a minute. This is not how it is supposed to be. Behave yourselves. The world has enough clamoring for power and a dissonance of its own. Unity of purpose and trust to go along with it is what we need. The early church had one common goal, to proclaim the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. Now, could you imagine what it would have been like to sit at the feet of the apostles and hear their first-hand account of walking and talking with Jesus, seeing the miracles, being there. When Jesus walked into the upper room, when they thought all hope had gone? <sighs> Mind-blowing. And Jesus told them that they would receive power from on high. And on Pentecost, they received courage and strength from the Holy Spirit. Imagine what it would be like to live out that reality. It's astounding and life-changing. You know, to be awestruck that the God of all creation sent Jesus incarnate to walk with us, to walk on this earth, to teach us to heal and to lay down his life to cover our sin and to make a way for us to be reconciled with God. Wow. That's church. How can we help but to be a witness to God and God's work and to witness to all the world? And so it was. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. Oh, to live in a community of grace. How precious that is, to live without fear, to live in truth and honesty, to know forgiveness, to be a part of a community where everyone is pulling in the same direction, and to be empowered by the Holy Spirit. No wonder the church grew. A Levite from, Cy some, from Cyprus named Joseph, sold his land and laid all of the proceeds at the apostles' feet. Now, traditionally, being a Levite, you would not have had any land of your own, so possibly the field could have been land reserved for his burial. Either way, he sold it. It, re 
reminds me of when missionaries in the late 1800s, when they went across the ocean, they shipped everything in a pine box, meaning that they were committed to live and die for the Lord in the new land that God was calling them to. Even today, I have missionary friends who, when they became missionaries, sold all that they had, even their homes, and brought nothing with them. They rely on the support of people like you and like me. One example from the late 1800s is C.T. Studd, the founder of the mission that my friends work for. He was a missionary to China, India, and Africa. He gave all of his inheritance away, and when questioned by critics that told him he was too old, sick, or crazy to pioneer such a mission, he replied, if Jesus Christ be God and died for me, then no sacrifice can be too great for me to make to him. This is the kind of commitment that I think about when I hear of the early church as well. So enter into our text for today, Ananias and Sapphira. Maybe they wanted the accolades of laying money at the feet of the apostles with the recognition from the growing community as people who gave out of great sacrifice. Perhaps they imagined the grateful murmur of the crowds. Oh, see what they have done. What a big sacrifice. We owe them such a big thanks. Aren't they just amazing? Oh, they must be very holy. But behind the scenes, things are not as holy or sacrificial as we were led to believe. They planned to sell a plot of land, but agreed as a couple to keep back some of the proceeds for themselves. Already, the unity of the heart and soul of community was in danger. Ananias lied about his giving. In Greek, the word that is translated as kept back is more akin to the deceit of embezzlement. And it makes you wonder if Ananias had already told Peter that he was going to sell the land and give all of the proceeds to the church. But yet, in their hearts, Ananias and Sapphira had decided to deceive. They misrepresented their giving, and their deceit was in the misrepresentation. To lie and deceive is to strike a blow to the oneness of the community. And I believe that the Holy Spirit revealed this deception to Peter, for the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. Peter asked Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and to keep back part of the proceeds of the land? It is a chilling accusation. This is serious business. He could have asked, why do you dare destroy the unity of the church with your deception? The core of the problem is deceiving the Holy Spirit. For it is the Holy Spirit that is building up and empowering the church. The disruption of the community cannot stand. When we lie to each other and to the church, we lie to the Holy Spirit. Even today, we tend to forget that we are the body of Christ and that we are accountable to one another and to God. And so, if we gossip or lie, we offend the Holy Spirit of God, and thus, we tear down the oneness of heart and soul of the church. The impact of our sin reaches further than we expect. And so, we ask for forgiveness from God and from neighbor like the prodigal son who came home and said, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. It is not only his father that he had grieved. Ananias' sin was far-reaching, too. 
Interesting, interestingly enough, the problem for Ananias was not that he gave too little, but that he lied about the amount of money he received for the land. In this paraphrase, Peter says to Ananias, the land was yours to begin with, to do with what you want. You were not under compulsion to sell the land, and when you sold the land, wasn't the money still yours to do with what you wanted? So why did you make plans to lie in your heart? You did not lie to us, but to God. The selling of their land became a scheme of deceit and not a giving from the heart. God takes this very seriously. Deceit, lying, and scheming destroy the church, and it destroys the church's witness of the kingdom of God to the world. We are shocked and unsettled by the deaths of Adonias and Sapphira. Did this really happen? It's here in Scripture, and so we cannot avoid it. God will protect God's church, even from within. The Holy Spirit is not to be trifled with, and the boundaries of the early church were set early on. And yes, there is the fear of the Lord. And hearing this just makes me take a deep breath. Whew. And it makes me take a look at my own life. Where have I misrepresented? Where have I lied? Where have I embezzled? Now, I am not advocating the slaying of deceivers, but this one-time occurrence reveals the seriousness that God places on the unity of the church. We are dealing with more than just a slight mishap. We are dealing with deception. And if that is not identified and dealt with, it has the potential to destroy the foundational unity of the church. The Holy Spirit is protecting the fledgling church from the temptations within. It is a tough message. Today, thankfully, we do not see people falling dead in the service. And the unity, the oneness of heart and soul is still key to the witness of the church as the representative of the kingdom of God to the world. We are accountable to God for our actions. We are the people of countercultural unity, for we believe in the life-giving resurrection of Jesus Christ. We believe in God's hope, promise, and transformation. We are a new creation by God's grace. The unity of heart and soul is vital to the church and worth standing up for and praying for. To the new members joining us today, you may be wondering, what are we getting into? <laughs> we are not perfect but we pray that we are grace-filled and that we receive you into that grace. We have taken the same vows that you take today. We strive to love Jesus and walk together as his disciples, to live as a faith community, the body of Christ here at Morrisville Presbyterian Church, to work toward the oneness of heart and soul, we strive to share the gospel of Jesus Christ, to glorify God in all that we say and do. You are joining a community like no other. The immeasurable grace of God abounds, and we rejoice in the honor and the privilege of serving God in the community of faith. And we pray that together, 
we can be a witness of God's grace to the world with the oneness of heart and soul. May it be so. Amen.